Today, I had too much coffee, so we're gonna zip through some quick tips that you might have missed and which will save you tons of time in Blender. Let's start with General Viewport Cavity. You can change the look of your objects in solid shading mode by opening up the viewport shading options and enabling cavity. Tweaking the ridge and cavity values will give you a clearer indication of where your edges and ambient occlusion show up. Matte Caps. You can add matte caps to Blender to change the look of your objects while you work, like this. To install new matte caps, go to Viewport Shading, Matte Caps, then click the cog icon and select Install Matte Caps. Jan from Blender Secrets has a huge collection of free matte caps here, which is linked in the description. View Pie Menu. For some reason, so few people know about this. You can hold the tilde key for the View Pie menu for orthographic views. No more holding control and mashing numpad keys to get around. It's so much faster. Custom Themes. Tired of the default Blender theme or don't like the colors? You can customize the 3D viewport to your heart's content. Head to Edit, Preferences, Themes, and open up 3D viewport to dial in your theme. Menu Sliding. If you have a zillion add-ons or your window is too small to show all of the menus, Hover over the menu area and hold middle mouse button to move the menu around. Tab for Pie Menu. Enable Tab for Pie Menu in the Preferences options. This way you can quickly switch between modes just by holding Tab. Statistics. If you want to see exactly how dense your scene is, just go to Viewport Overlays and toggle Statistics. It'll show you your selected object on the left and the entire scene on the right. F2 to rename. You can select any object and hit F2 to rename it. M to move collections. Select your objects then hit M to create a new collection or to move them to an existing one. Linked duplicates. If you need a lot of one object all over the place and don't want to edit each one individually, you can create a linked duplicate by hitting Alt-D. This creates an instance of that object that will reflect any changes you make across all linked duplicates. Linking materials between objects. If you want to quickly apply a material across lots of objects, first apply the material to one object. Then select all of the objects you want to share that material, followed by the object with the material on it. Make sure that the object with the material is the active object, then hit Ctrl L and select Link Materials. Now if you change the material on any of the objects, it'll be reflected across them all. Duplicate and Split When you need an exact copy of a particular face, you can select it in Edit Mode and hit Shift D to duplicate it, just like in Object Mode. With the duplicate face selected, you can then hit P to bring up the separation options and choose Selected to make it into a separate object. This works with multiple faces selected as well. Repeat last action. If you want to repeat an action exactly, you can hit Shift R to repeat the last action you performed. Let's make a linked duplicate of Suzanne, move it over, then hold Shift R. Whee! Select linked. In edit mode, you can hit L to select all of the geometry linked to the selected face. It's very useful for when you have joined together several objects and want to select individual objects. View layers. This button way up here is the view layers button. This allows you to work magic, but its simplest use is to create visibility sets like this. Filters. These options give you excellent control over your blend file. You can do things like restrict whether something is selectable, you can completely stop the objects from being processed in order to save memory, as well as set holdouts and indirects for compositing. Multiple scenes. This button way up here is your scene button. You can create multiple completely independent scenes within a single blend file. This is really useful if you have a particular set of assets but want to iterate by arranging them differently. Local view or isolate object. To bring an object into local view, hit forward slash. This will isolate the selected object in your viewport, allowing you to work without your view being blocked by other objects. Hit forward slash again to leave local view. Toggle all overlays. If you want to see your scene with no overlays, hit shift alt z to quickly toggle them off and on. It's great for progress screenshots without rendering. More screen space. Hover in any window and hit control space to toggle maximizing the window. This is super handy for sculpting or painting. Also great for screenshots without rendering. Save incremental. If you want to save your work in stages, you can hit control alt s to save your blend file in incremental versions. This can save you from huge headaches when work needs to be recovered or changed at an earlier stage. All right, now let's move on to sculpting. Smooth sculpting. If I use the scrape brush on this sphere, you can see these jagged splotches all over. That's no good. To fix this, you can set sculpt spacing to 1 for super smooth strokes. This is a per brush setting, so each brush will have a different value. I recommend changing the ones you use to 1% and then saving your default file. Your sculpts will thank you. Stroke shortlist. To quickly change between stroke types, hit Alt E to bring up a shortlist. Saves a ton of time and also works for texture painting. Quickly switch working object. If you're sculpting multiple objects at once, you can quickly switch your working object by hovering over it and hitting Alt Q. Scene Brush Scale If you're moving around your sculpt and don't want the brush to change size, 
Switch the brush's radius unit to Scene. Then it'll stay the same even if you zoom in and out. Fast Mask Menu. In Sculpt Mode, hit M to access the Mask Tool. With the Mask Tool selected, you can hit A to bring up a pie menu of common mask operations. This is incredibly handy and speeds up the workflow a ton. Fast Face Sets. You can quickly create face sets by masking off the area you want, then hitting Alt W and choosing face sets from masked. You can also go to face sets, initialize face sets, and choose by normals, then open up the dialog here, hold shift, and tweak the values to get finer control. Fall off types. If you want to know which fall off does what, here's what they look like at full strength on a flat surface. All right, time for selections. Most of you will know the basics. Hold shift and click to select multiple individual faces, Hold Alt and click to select loops. Hold Control and click to select the shortest non-diagonal path. Hold Control and hit plus or minus to grow or shrink selections. Hit C for circle select where left click adds, middle mouse removes and right click confirms. Cool. Select patterns. Did you know you can grow and shrink selections in a pattern? Select two faces and hit Control Shift Plus to grow the selection according to your initial two faces. This works for verts, edges, and faces. Let's look at the select menu. It's full of goodies. Fix loose geometry. If you suspect there's some loose or floating geometry in your object, you can go to select, select all by trait, and choose loose geometry. This will select any free floating bits of geo which you have, which you can then delete. Check or deselect. Need a 3D chessboard for some reason? Select all of your faces and go to select, check or deselect. Some subdivision required, batteries not included. Select sharp edges. If your object is fairly simple or has well-defined edges, you can quickly select all of its edges by going to select and choosing sharp edges. You can then tweak the angle, down here, to get the results you want. It can save a lot of time when doing UVs on simple objects. Alright, one more stop before we wrap this up. Node Wrangler. This add-on ships with Blender by default. There's absolutely no good reason to not have this turned on. Do it! Select the shader node, whichever one you have, in this case a principled BSDF, and hit Ctrl T for an automatic setup of nodes. You can then open the image you need. To load in an entire texture set at once, select the shader node and hit shift Control t Then you can choose all of your maps and it'll render correctly. All right, there's a bunch of Blender tips for you. I hope you found them helpful and maybe discovered some new shortcuts that will help you speed up. If you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more. If you want to support videos like these, consider joining me on Patreon for exclusive content or buying me a coffee via Ko-fi. The links are in the description. All right, everyone, I'll be back soon with another video. Deuces. P.S. The 10k sub celebration video is still in the works, it's just been tricky to wrangle everybody. But you'll get your gorilla snake, don't you worry. Oh yeah, and I'll be back to streaming Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 10am to 12pm CST. On YouTube and Twitch. So come and hang out while I make some game assets in Blender. Alright, actual deuces. <laughs> Bye.